wish we could be able to get you a cookie there to you, but uh, we'll try to see what we can do. But I hope the kids uh, there enjoyed it as well. Tonight what I want to look at is the idea of divine light. Now what we've been talking about over the past four Sundays, as we've been doing the four Sundays of Advent, we've been talking about the idea of hope, peace, joy, and love. And that's what these candles represent. But every time that I've talked about it, I've talked about it in the sense that not as the world does it, not world uh, hope and peace, joy and love, but divine, meaning from God that it is real, that it is secure, that it it will last, and it actually is effective. So tonight what I want to do is I want to talk about a divine light. You know, the world always talks about how all of us have a light inside of us, but that's not true. We don't have that light because our hearts, according to the Bible, is, is that the hearts are evil and darkness is there. But what I want to talk about tonight is the divine light that the angels talked about when they said, Behold, we give you great new, good news of great joy, which will be to all people, because given to us today is a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And so tonight I want to look at divine light, looking in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2. And what that is basically is going to be talking about is the people in darkness. So let's go ahead and read it. It's on your screen. The Bible tells us here in, in the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2. It says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. And so when we're talking about the light, the the light of God is shining on people. It's the revelation given to them. And the thing that I want us to understand, my friend, today, right here, right now, is the people are living in darkness. The world is a dark place, amen? And people without Jesus, at that time were living in darkness, but even today, people are living in, in darkness. And basically what that says is there is no hope. They're left grasping for life, and, and people are looking for, looking for answers. To, in this year, 2020, I promise you, people are, are striving for something to hold on to. They're looking for an answer to what in the world is going on, and they're anticipating the end of the year so that hopefully next year will be even better. But I want to tell you, the darkness is just as dark in 2021 as it was in here in 2020. The darkness is there and people are living in darkness and having no hope. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 19, it says, The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. The people who are without Jesus and have this idea that, that nothing is going right and they're stumbling, but they don't have any idea what it is that's going on because they have distress in their life. They have troubles, perplexities, sorrows, and, and even confusion because when you are in the dark, you're confused, you're oriented, you're disoriented. You don't know what's really going on around you. You don't know what's really out there. And so the people are looking for an answer. But the problem is, they're blinded by the truth, or by, from the truth. They're blinded by Satan to, from the truth. And Satan brings about a deception. He's lying to them and telling them, the answers are here, and the answers are here, the answers are here, the answers are within you. All you have to do is dig deep down inside of yourself and pull you up by your bootstraps, and everything is going to be good. But Satan is deceiving the world, and he wants the world in darkness. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Verses 3 and 4, it says this. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds of of, of of the God of this age are blinded to those who do not believe. Without Jesus Christ, those people are not believing, and they're blinded by the truth. My friends, the truth is in Jesus. Amen? We're celebrating that truth tonight. We're celebrating that truth that was given to the shepherds that night. We're celebrating the truth of Jesus Christ because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. But what people are doing is they are buying into the lies of Satan, and they're being blinded by the truth, and they want to grab hold of anything else except the real truth and he's saying here the people who have walked in darkness they now can see a great light it has appeared to them and it is a great light but they're confused someone once said even in our day and time that people who believe that truth is hate are those who hate the truth so when we speak truth they are so blinded that the truth appears to them to be hatred 
And we preach hate. They say we in the church preach hate by preaching Jesus. But they're so blinded. And they begin to hate that truth. But I'm here to tell you today, people are living in darkness. And tonight, as we celebrate Christmas Eve, as we celebrate Jesus Christ, tomorrow as we enter into the time of Christmas, I promise you there's a whole lot of people that are going into this time blinded from the truth. They don't know the truth. They think it's just a holiday that they gather together and then they go home and it's all over with. But the great news is tonight, God is light. God is light. That light is shining. That light is there. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. My friends, that light is God. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 5, this is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him no darkness is at all. There is no darkness in God. Not at all. Now, there's modern pastors even today who are trying to buy in and bring society into them or buying into society as well and get along. And they say, well, you know, there, there could be a little bit of darkness in God. But my friends, if there is any darkness in God, He is not God. God is light. He's not kind of a light or sort of a light. He's not a... A a form of light, God is light. And so we see light dispels the darkness by revelation and knowledge and purity and goodness. It dispels it because these are the characters of God. That's why he is the light. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes comes to the Father except by me because I am the truth of all of this. And the light dispels the darkness. And so we can look and then see the second part is that Jesus is the light of the world. So when we lit all these candles all all the last four weeks, we've lit the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. But tonight what I want to do is I want to light the last and final candle of Advent, which is what we would call the Jesus candle. Because Jesus again says that I am the light of the world. And once Jesus shows his light, then we're now able to have all these others. But without Jesus, we have none of these. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that Jesus is the light of the world. And Jesus said in John 8, 12, he says, Then Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows in me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of of life. My friends, that's why we have hope today in this world even in the even in this year can i tell you we have hope and we can have peace i know in our church as i shared in the first service there's a lot of people several members of our church who are dealing with and struggling with loved ones the passing even of loved ones and it is a dark time for them even in my family we've experienced it this past week and it would be very easy to see that that there may not be hope, there may not have a peace. But my friends, even in the darkest times, that we can have hope, peace, joy, and love, not because of us, not because of what's in us, not because of what's going on around us, but because of Jesus being the light. Now the good thing is, is as God is the light, then the Bible says we have become children of light. We have become children of light. In Ephesians 5.8 it says, For you were once in darkness. We, if we, even in Christ, we were once in that darkness, running from the light, hiding from the light. But it says, Now you are the light in the Lord. And then he tells us this, Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. Not by our goodness, but by His We should let our lights shine out to the world. We need to let our lights shine to the darkness out there because that's how they're going to see Jesus in us. Matthew 5, 16 says this, and I want to wrap it up. It says, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works, your light shining, which is Jesus shining through you, and then glorify your Father in heaven. People ought to be seeing light through us. And so tonight, we understand that as we light our candles here in just a few moments, that what we're going to be doing is a couple of things. The first thing we're going to be doing is that we are showing the world 
And we're showing to God we understand the truth. By his revelation, this light is now ours. It is our light shining in us. And so when we turn our candles, it's saying, God, we understand the truth. But it's also surrendering to the goodness and purity that we're going to surrender our lives over to him. I a lot of times like to say that we like to talk about committing our lives over. But I don't want us to commit. I don't think God wants us to commit our life. I think he wants us to surrender because commitments are me saying, okay, I agree with you. I'm going to do this. But surrendering is saying, Lord, I don't have a choice anymore. I'm yours. But we're surrendering, surrendering to goodness and purity. But the last thing that we're going to do when we light these candles is we're making a commitment to God and we're surrendering over to him to say, Lord, now we want to be a guide to those who are walking in the darkness. We want the world to be able to see you through us so that they will see our goodness, so that they will see our purity in life. And that light that shines in us that's not our light but his, that they would be able to follow that and to come to Jesus this Christmas season. So I'm going to ask our team to come back up here as we're going to sing here in just a moment. But I would like for all you tonight, as, we, as I pray, that we're going to turn on our, our, light, our candles tonight, right now. Turn on your candle, and then show again, and say, God, by turning this candle on, I am showing my understanding of truth. And hopefully you folks at home have your candles, and you can light them and do the same thing, to say, God, I understand the truth. I, I thank you for the truth, and I, I know that his name is Jesus. So we light this candle, honoring him. But we also surrender over to you, God. That whatever light I shine is not mine any longer. But it's his. It's his light. And when we turn on our candles, we're saying, God, use us to give guidance to the darkness. That those who are walking in light, in darkness, might they see this light? Might they desire the light that's in me? And God, I show this tonight. So this is what we do. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for loving us enough to send Jesus to die on the cross for us. And God, as we turn on our candles now, and hopefully those at home are lighting their candles, the God that we are dispelling the darkness, of con the, the, the darkness Lord, that is surrounding people, and Father, we understand the truth. Father, that we surrender to your goodness and we want to guide people to Jesus. Father, thank you for that light. Thank you for making us children of light. For the rest of this time, Lord, we light these candles in honor of you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Stand and sing with us. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round the unvirgin mother.
Father, we thank you. We thank you for this night. God, we thank you for all that it represents. Father, we know that the world is in darkness. We know they are confused and blinded. So, Father, we lift them up to you and we pray, Father, that you would use us as we go through Christmas Eve tonight and Christmas tomorrow and starting in the new year, that, God, we would be that light that shines. Even though the world may hate that light, even though the world hates the truth, God, that we would stand on that truth, we would shine the truth, and we let that truth be in us through Jesus. I thank you for this night. I thank you for everyone that's here and all those that have joined us in the live stream. And Father, I pray that we would hold on to the specialness of this day and the specialness of tomorrow. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Man, go ahead and be seated for just a moment. I want to thank you for coming uh, with us tonight. Thank you all at home for joining us. And uh, we want to uh, wish you a Merry Christmas and hope that you'll have a great day tomorrow, a great evening tonight. And we want you to keep the candles and take them home with you. And, and uh, they're a gift from First Baptist West. And we want you to remember that you are the light of the world now. Amen. Jesus shining through you. Thank you so much for coming. Have a, have a great, safe uh, Christmas Eve and a great Christmas tomorrow. Amen. And we'd love to see you back here Sunday morning. Join us on the live stream Sunday morning at 11 o'clock or 8.30 for the early service, and we look forward to seeing you. But God bless you. Have a great day. I'm going to leave us in prayer, and then what we're going to do is the people on the south side over here, we're going to let you be dismissed first, and if y'all over here on the, on the north would hold for just a few moments, let them clear, and then we'll dismiss you as well. But thank you for coming with us. God bless you. Good night. Let me pray with you. Father, again, thank you for this night. Thank you for what it represents. Be with everyone now, Lord, as they travel home. Keep everyone safe. Give them a good Christmas Eve and a great Christmas. Father, we pray for those that are hurting tonight. That, God, we lift them up to you and pray that you would shine on them your grace and your mercy. And that, Father, they could sense your presence in their lives. And that we, again, can be examples. Thank you for Christmas and what it represents. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Everyone on the north side, God bless you. Merry Christmas, and you're dismissed.